What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper Golf Channel, coming to you with my new segment, Lindy's Best Nine Bets. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video and goes a long way for you. Uh, you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our brand new channel. Guys, I'm excited to be here with you talking the Honda Classic. What a tournament to debut this on. Uh, <laughs> we had stack fields the last two weeks, not having the same here, but... I got a really fun concept. I've been working on this for a long time. Golf betting is my dear, near and dear to my heart. Uh, I played Division One golf at Iowa State once upon a time, many, many moons ago, but uh, golf betting is definitely my favorite type of betting to partake in. Gonna be teaching you guys the ins and outs of it as we go along, but there's going to be a scorecard on this bottom bar. It's going to keep you apprised of my bets as we go along. Why nine bets? Well, because nine holes uh, it just made sense, you know, for all my golf people out there. Uh, 18 bets is too many, probably, even though just depending on the week, stuff can happen. But I've got my nine best bets, give you guys different categories of things. We have matchups, we have uh, make and miss cuts, and then we have some outrights to round it out. So going to be following along there on the bottom bar. I guess we're going this way because it reverses it. But check out DraftKings as well. That's in the bottom bar in the description box below for you. You bet $5, you're going to get yourself $150 when that first bet wins. Find the biggest favorite you can in college basketball on the money line every single night. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Alrighty, y'all. PGA Lindy's. What a time to be alive. If you've joined me from the NBA, uh, from the MLB streets, welcome. Excited to be talking with you. Let's get to the picks. We're starting off with a bang as the class of this field, <laughs> the class of this field, are squared off against one another on DraftKings in this matchup. Now, if you're new to betting head-to-heads in PGA, this is an important note. FanDuel almost always charges more juice in the marketplace than DraftKings. Now, while DraftKings will only charge 10 cents of juice on both sides, you can see above that Lowry and M are a ridiculous 19 cents a piece to play if everything else were being equal. Just know that if the two plays are equal, you'll want to go to DraftKings almost every single time. So why am I betting this one on FanDuel? Simple. It's a better number to bet Lowry at plus 138 than at DraftKings where he's plus 125. This is odd shopper golf after all, so shop for the best lines and bet them wherever they're best, regardless of the margins on each side. But why Lowry over pre-tournament favorite M in this spot? A couple reasons. First off, value. I'm getting nearly one and a half to one on a high variance golf course, which is PGA National, where they're playing this week for the Honda Classic. Water lurks around every corner, and even Sung J M missed this cut last year as a result of that. And two, Shane Lowry, actually has been the better ball striker of the two ever so slightly in their past 50 rounds. A sample size I like to use as it's just enough to get rid of a few bad tournaments that might skew results, but it's also short enough that recent form gets baked into the data accurately. So let's also go to this. Lowry finally got back to tee degree game that we've grown accustomed to from him at the Genesis last week here in LA. 7.3 strokes gained in that department for the week. It was his fourth straight broken week with the putter, but going back to the Palm Beach Garden slash Jupiter, Florida area where he lives, practices routinely on Bermuda grass, that should bode well for him. Hell, if he can even just be even to the field with the flat stick, his long game should be enough to complement the rest of his game and catapult him to the top. Or in this case, all we need is him simply beating the one guy we need him to. So this isn't to say Sung J M is a bad golfer to back but books are certainly giving him the weight he deserves as the class of this field, making other golfers far more appealing to bet on at PGA National's champion course. Give me a half unit play on the two studs battling it out here with hope that Lowry emerges victorious. To the second hole we go. Yeah, see the scorecard below? Second hole we go. Uh, we've got a head-to-head -head on DraftKings between Chris Kirk and Matt Kuchar. And shout out to Kuchar for the nice finish at the Genesis. Solo eighth, a sick... 5.5 strokes gained approach and 4.2 strokes gained around the green. If he putted, putted, putted? It was Poa greens after all. Putted remotely competently on the Poana greens of Riviera. He lost 2.9 strokes with the flat stick there. He could be talking about the champion, the guy who could have beaten John Rahm and Max Homa last week. But Kuchar legitimately lost 4.4 strokes gained T to green the week before at the Waste Management. And he missed the cut at the AT&T against a weak field up at Pebble, losing 2.7 stro uh, strokes in that department as well. My conclusion, just a bit of an outlier there at Riviera last week, of course, with no water whatsoever. And now I can get Chris Kirk straight up against him. 
I'm interested. Kirk took last week off after missing a, a cut in Phoenix, but showed some serious form with two top threes to start off his 2023 campaign. He's been sharp around the greens, gaining strokes here and there with the putter in every single event so far this season. And Tita Green, he dominated before falling flat with the irons in Scottsdale. But overall, I am well aware that 44-year-old Matt Kuchar is a Hall of Famer and playing a shorter golf course than normal, this being around 7,000, I'll share a shade above 7,000 yards, might bode well for him. But Kirk has been stellar during this stretch in the past, evidenced by his 7th place finish at this tournament last year. So give me the better player at the better number. Feeling really, really good about this one. Chris Kirk, oh, identical number that is, minus 110 standard juice here, straight up for a half unit play against Matt Kuchar. And lastly, we've got an Aussie by the name of Min Woo Lee. He is hovering at minus 104. He is a dog to Denny McCarthy, the best putter on the planet right now. Now, I know a lot of you might be saying, who is Min Woo Lee? Totally understandable. He's a 24-year-old. He is the furthest thing from a household name that there is in golf. In fact, he's got basically zero U.S. success. Last year was a disaster, save for a 14th at the Masters. Fermina looks good. But he burst onto the European scene after a highly decorated amateur career, won the 2021 Scottish Open, lots of good stuff that we have on his resume. And he's really started to find some form this fall. Four events, four consecutive top 15s internationally, with three of those being top fives, uh, of course, schedule rolling into this year. The most impressive, though, Abu Dhabi HSBC Championship finished tied second, and he continues to light it up in the ball striking data department. And Denny McCarthy does not. In fact, Denny has lost strokes T to green in all but one event since October of last season. Let me reemphasize that. In his last seven starts, he has finished positive strokes gained in literally only one of them. That is a ton of pressure that he's putting on his putter. And as much as I want to believe that that can carry the day for him here, I'll take the pure ball strikers with water lurking on literally 15 of 18 holes at PGA National. So considering Denny is the favorite here, something of a discount to buy low on Min Woo Lee here in the head-to-head -head market, a full unit send is in order to round out the matchups department on hole number three. Hey, everybody, just wanted to reemphasize DraftKings is running an awesome promo. You bet $5, $5. And if anything hits in the money line department, you're going to get yourself 150 bucks of bonus bets. So take advantage of that offer in the video description box below. Find the biggest favorite in the college basketball streets that you possibly can. Golf, probably not going to make sense for this one unless, unless you want to try to find like a make cut situation. This is not the golf course for that, though. Let me just say, not the golf course to bet a heavy favorite in terms of the make cut department. I still like one guy to make a cut. We'll talk about that later here, but find the biggest college basketball favorite you possibly can. Make sure you just sign up in that video description box below and get that 150 bucks of bonus bets. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. This is for 21 and over people. All righty, y'all, back to the fix. Let's get the party started here on the fourth hole. Yeah, fourth hole on the scorecard. I'm taking a shot on Billy Horschel to miss the cut at the treacherous PGA National. The noted Florida Gator has really found some form over his past year and a half, a win at the Memorial, a second at the Arnold Palmer, and to throw it in for comparison's sake, a decent 16th at this very event last year. But he gained 3.5 strokes gain off the tee to convert that into the 16th. And that driving game of late, pretty much kaput, ranking 92nd? 92nd is the correct number amongst this field in strokes gain off the tee. And to reiterate, the field is not good, so that is not a great number to be carrying. Plus, he lost 4.7 strokes with the putter last week, so if that club's not good for Horschel, he could be in major, major trouble here. Feels sac sacrilegious to take a, a Florida Gator in Florida to miss a cut, but I think some top players in this field will not be finding the weekend due to the nature of this golf course. So gotta get some plus money numbers mixed into the betting card here, specifically targeting poor golfers uh, off the tee of late. That makes a half unit at this number on Horschel decent enough that it makes my scorecard. Yep, to number five we go. We're going to Denny McCarthy, yet again, picking on him for a second time in the make-miss cut section. We want him to miss the cut, plus 250 on DraftKings. Look, there will be, I repeat, there will be elite players missing the cut at this event. And elite, I put an asterisk next to because there's really nobody besides him and Lowry with any sort of of massive, massive pedigree at this given moment. Shout out Matt Kuchar in the past. Webb Simpson is just 
I don't even know what to say anymore, but I'm sorry to Denny McCarthy and his family, but I do not consider you elite based on your ball striking. How can you possibly be? And you've got the third longest odds over at DraftKings for a missed cut. Pretty easy bet. No further explanation needed. Hopefully he can just continue this bad form ball striking and doesn't gain six shots with the putter. Not going to find the weekend. Plus 250? That is some good stuff to get on Denny McCarthy to miss the cut. And my favorite play of the make miss cut section is actually Sepp Straka to make the cut at minus 158 on FanDuel. The defending champion of this event is getting no love here, and I totally understand why. This is recent form. It just hasn't been very good. Tons of miscuts cuts towards the end of last season. Tons of issues, ball striking. But all he has to do is make a damn cut here. And coming off of being the previous champion here, gotta imagine there's some good juju. And we did start to see signs of life. Second at Sanderson Farms, where he gained a lot with the approach, gained a lot with the putter. The Tour Championship last year, whatever. We're not even going back to that. But the FedEx St. Jude finished second there. He has had some rough, rough going towards the fall into this year, but a 45th at the Genesis, gaining some strokes with the putter. I think we're going to see him just be one of those golfers that can survive off the tee. And when you're getting close to standard juice for somebody to make a cut, who is the defending champion of the event, hard not to take a good hard look at that. Grades out well on Odd Shopper. You guys should definitely be checking out that every single week over at oddshopper.com. But I just... I just feel like this is a number that doesn't represent what his chances should be here. It should be closer to the minus 200 range. That makes me pretty bullish on it. I'm going to be firing a unit and a half, trying to make that a standard unit coming back to me on him to make a cut. May this golf course, a good juju return to Mr. Sepp Straka. I know you've been waiting for this. Let's get to hole number seven. We're going to the futures and the outrights. We're going to start with the top 20 and pretty wild to see Higo, Garrick Higo on my betting card for the first time in a very, very long time. But better than three and a half to one to top 20. Feels like a good number to start dipping my toes back into those waters. Hey, speaking of water, think we've established there's a lot of it here at PGA National. And the 23-year-old South African has three European Tour Ws to his name already. And a PGA Tour W as well at a weak field Palmetto Championship. Field looks pretty similar here. That form disappeared in 2022 with way more missed cuts than made ones pretty atrocious around the green and bad putting, just an overall bad combination. But I'm starting to see some signs specifically with the driver. And this is where I'm getting a little bit of a nice number here at three and a half to one. He's been positive for five straight events, strokes gain off the tee. That is a massive number. He can also gain such as what he did, 4.2 strokes with the approach at the American Express. Lots of weak fields, lots of opportunity for him to go out and just show that he is still going to be a decent enough player at the tour level at 23 years of age. Lots of room, lots of experience to keep growing. Think he's a buy at this kind of a number. Now, I don't want to be dipping my toes in the outrights top 10 market with him, but three and a half to one on a top 20 here. More than happy if he does go out and win this golf tournament. At least I'm getting paid in the meantime. To the eighth hole and this is a staple of my betting card in weaker fields. His name is JT Poston. He is the all-around game you're looking for to compete here. Now, he's coming off two missed cuts. But when those two missed cuts are at the waste management in Genesis Open with nuclear fields that he's had here the last couple of weeks, insanely strong fields, I'm more than happy to overlook it. And slide back to a weaker field there in the American Express, which garnered a better field than this one, ironically, you see that he had a sixth place finish with two and a half strokes gained putting on Bermuda surfaces that he's a little bit more accustomed to from North Carolina, lives in the Sea Island area in Georgia. I'm not going to be going crazy with any sort of outright with him. I'm going to have a little sprinkle on it, but this T10 number is too good to pass up nearly four to one over at FanDuel. Yet another half unit play that I think makes a great addition to your betting card and a great addition to my scorecard there on hole number eight. And to my favorite outright on the board this week, Min Woo Lee at 28 to 1 on DraftKings.com. I discussed Min Woo a little bit earlier in this program, but to revisit, nobody knows who he really is. He's not listed like an elite player, which is sort of what he's been for the last few months. And this feel is doggy doo doo. Terrible field, great pedigree. I feel pretty comfortable getting 28 to 1. Now, he was sitting at 20 to 1. Shows you not a lot of action was coming in early on him. 28 to 1. Maybe this number moves north of 30. 
always be paying attention to golf odds. They are always going to be changing, reacting in real time. And with two days left before the event, maybe we start seeing some 30s posted there for him. But I like the game. I like seeing that he's had some decent results, such as that T14 at the Masters. Yeah, the Masters, pretty important little golf tournament on Bermuda as well. Now, this golf course has way more water, a lot of treachery waiting for you everywhere here, but he's played well a lot internationally here of late. I feel like 28 to 1, pretty easy for me to go half a unit on that number, be happy to live with it. And hey, maybe we can take, take, take down the outright on our very first Lindy's Best Nine Bets. That does it for the very first edition of Lindy's Best Nine Bets. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of my plays. If there's any plays you've got your eye on for the Honda Classic, I know it's a weak field, but you know what? These have been historically the ones that I've smashed the most. Uh, you know, you get in some of these elite fields really, really hard, especially with John Rahm winning everything here of late. I think the board is a lot more wide open this week than most weeks. So I'm looking forward to betting it. If you are too, hit that like button on the way out. Check out DraftKings, bet $5, get yourself 150 bucks in bonus bets when your money line hits. So uh, take advantage, put five bucks on the biggest college basketball favorite you can find on any given night. Uh, and if you're got a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know your feedback. Uh, very excited about this segment going forward. Until next week, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck at the Honda Classic.